On November 14, 1981, a 22-year-old adventurous Oxford University Medical School student went on an exploratory journey in the Wookiee Hole Caves with fellow Oxford University Cave Club members. However, they never anticipated the lurking dangers in the deep, dark cave. Wookiee Hole Caves are a group of limestone caverns located in a village called Wookiee Hole, which is in Somerset, England, near Wells. People first went diving in these caves in the 1930s. Jack Shepard, Graham Balcom, and Penelope Powell were the first divers. After that, more divers explored the caves and developed new diving equipment and techniques. The caves are always the same temperature, around 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The River Axe flows through the caves before flowing out of the caves into the open air. The Wookiee Hole Cave System has a lot of water in it. For a long time, most parts of the caves couldn't be reached by walking. Back in 1935, if you were exploring the caves, the farthest place you could walk was Chamber 3. But that year, two brave divers, Graham Balcom and Penelope Mossy Powell, went beyond Chamber 3. They walked by the riverbed from Chamber 3 to Chamber 4. Their diving gear was really heavy and meant for deep sea diving, not for exploring caves. Even though their equipment wasn't right, Graham made it to Chamber 7 later that same year. Then in 1948, after World War II, Graham and his friends used oxygen gear that was made during the war. With this better equipment, they went all the way to Chamber 9. So the Cathedral Chamber, also known as Chamber 9, is where most diving happens in the caves today. There's another chamber, the 25th one, nicknamed Lake of Gloom because it has lots of thick mud deposits. At the end of this chamber, there's something called a sump. Divers have gone into this sump for about 1,312 feet and reached a depth of 295 feet before they couldn't go any further because gravel blocked their way. This endpoint is about 3,281 feet northeast of where they started. Even though people have explored quite a bit, we still don't know everything about the cave. Divers have explored about 13,123 feet, but there could be more to discover. Keith Potter was just 22 years old, but people described him as daring, charming, and smart. He had many talents. Besides exploring caves, he was also studying medicine at Exeter College, Oxford. He dreamed of becoming a consultant physician. Those who knew him, especially in the Oxford University Cave Club, knew he was full of energy and excitement. Keith made a big impact on caving, especially in the OUCC. Even when things got tough, he stayed funny and dependable. His friends and colleagues admired him for his spirit and dedication. One big moment for Keith was in 1981. After spending 35 hours pushing through really tough passages in the caves, he emerged with a knee injury and painful sores. Despite all that, he was the first person to reach G2's final sum. Even though he was hurt, exhausted, and soaked, he didn't give up. He spent hours looking for another way through. Without Keith's determination, the Oxford University Cave Club might still be trying to finish exploring the G2 cave. These qualities showed why he was such a great cave diver. Keith Potter had one more year left before finishing the first part of his medical training. To relax from the stress of medical school, he and some other members of the Oxford University Cave Club planned a trip to Wookiee Hole. They arrived there on November 14, 1981, eager to explore the unknown parts of the cave. After parking their vehicles, they set out on foot toward the cave entrance. The parking lot sits at one end of the village so they had to walk about 10 minutes to reach the cave. Upon reaching the entrance of the cave and putting on their helmets, Keith and the rest of the OUCC team started their journey into the cave. The entrance to the Wookiee Hole Cave sits on the right side of the valley, at the end of a gorge formed by the river axe cutting through the limestone. As they entered the cave through Chamber 1, they were captivated by the sight of the river axe flowing gracefully through the cave. Flowing from Chamber 1, the river continues its journey to the resurgence through two sumps, eventually leaving the cave and entering the open air. The team couldn't help but marvel at this natural wonder, 
as they venture further into the depths of the cave. The first and second chambers didn't cause any problems for Keith and the OUCC team, and they easily made their way through them. When they reached the third chamber, they decided to set up camp to rest. Many explorers before them had also rested in Chamber 3. This chamber, also known as the Parlor, is famous for its size, as it was formed by water dissolving the limestone when the water levels were much higher in the past. After setting up camp, the team got their diving gear ready and went over their plan. They wanted to make sure everyone understood what they were trying to do, explore the deepest parts of the cave, which were in Chamber 25, so they made sure everyone knew what they were doing before they continued their exploration. Besides diving as deep as they could, the team had another goal, to map out new parts of the cave that nobody had explored before. What the group didn't know was that Keith had his own secret reason for wanting to dive. Once they were all set, they kept moving further into the cave, ready to dive through the sumps ahead. As they went deeper, the chambers changed a lot from the first two. Instead of big open spaces, they found themselves in narrow, low passages. Starting from Chamber 3, these passages were linked by tight tunnels, making it tricky to move around. In total, the passages in this area stretched for about 2,690 feet. The group squeezed through the narrow tunnels, passing through Chambers 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, until they finally reached Chamber 9, also known as the Cathedral. The feeling of excitement and curiosity about what's next is common among cavers, and Keith felt it too. He was really eager to explore deeper into Wookiee Hole than anyone had before. He was especially driven to find new secrets hidden in the cave's depths. Keith had heard stories about a secret underground river system that flowed deep under the Wookiee Hole. Even though he didn't know exactly where it was, he spent a lot of time studying maps and reading about the rocks and caves below the ground. He was sure he was close to making a big discovery that nobody had ever made before. Once the team gathered in Chamber 9, Keith didn't waste any time. He put his mouthpiece in and decided to try diving through the sump between the 9th and 19th chambers. This route was about 200 feet long and had been explored many times before, but Keith had never gone past a certain point. He was determined to change that. There are two ways to go through the sump, and Keith chose the lower, deeper path. Martin Farr, who was known as one of the top cave divers in the country, followed along the shallower route behind him. He moved his legs quickly and forcefully through the narrow passage, feeling his heart race faster with each moment. But as he sped deeper into the cave, he started to feel dizzy and lightheaded. Then, all of a sudden, everything went pitch black. It was as if someone had turned off the lights. As he ventured further into the sump, his excitement turned into fear and uncertainty. Keith pushed himself to swim against the current, which was like swimming uphill because the elbow of the sump was 70 feet deep. The water got colder and the current stronger, making it harder for him to keep going. He struggled to take in enough air to keep up with the intense effort his body was making. His lungs begged for air, but he didn't want to turn back. He thought he was so close to the end of the sump, but this feeling was likely because he was disoriented. Despite feeling more and more desperate, Keith kept going. He ignored the signals his body was giving him until he couldn't anymore. His vision started to blur and his muscles felt weak. Instead of taking a break, he made the fateful choice to keep going. He was determined to reach the end of the sump, hoping to find air in the 19th chamber and continue exploring until he found the underground river. Keith gave it all until he had nothing left to give. He ran out of air completely, which made him suffocate underwater. When Martin finally reached the end of the sump, he found Keith lying motionless in about 10 feet of water. Keith's mouthpiece had come off, and he was right near the air at the end of the flooded part of the cave. Martin quickly dived down to get him, and the rest of the group joined in to help. They tried to breathe for him for almost an hour, but it was too late. Keith had already passed away. The group hurried out of the cave in a panic, coming out on the left side of the valley near where the river axe springs up, 
under a tall cliff made of limestone. Once they got to their vehicles, they called for help, and the process of recovering Keith's body started. Keith's funeral took place in Wedmore, which was less than five miles away from where he lost his life. We would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching, take a dive on the like and subscribe buttons and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we come back with another exciting cave diving story.